when people talk about maintenance, what comes to mind is the issue of money. Ms. Hasselman, what does maintenance entail? Is, is it only about money or does it go further than that? Well, essentially, it, it basically boils down to money um, because what it is is that the non-custodian parent um, or the parents, if both of the parents are not um, having custody of the children, is responsible to provide for basic needs of the children. So that costs money. So the most effective way that that can take place is if money changes from one end to the next. But of course people can, a, a parent can buy, say if it's a small baby, buy nappies and, and formula and clothes instead of giving a um, fixed amount of money every month and that would also amount to maintenance. Mm. Let, let's take a scenario of an African setting where these people live in the village and uh, uh, this particular man says I, I do not have money but I have other resources, I have grains, I am a farmer, I have goats, I have cattle. Can that also be considered as a form of maintenance? Is it an acceptable form of maintenance? Well, it, it, we must be practical about these things. Um, if, like I said, if it's a baby, babies don't eat grain, and what, what must the baby do with, the, with cattle? Because remember, the money is, is to be used for the, for the needs of the child. So surely the person who's responsible must go and sell his head of cattle and give the money to, to the mother, if, if that is the scenario. Mm. Mr. Samkwasa, you, you are a maintenance officer. What's, what's your take? Yes, um, maintenance does not necessarily mean money must be given. Um, maintenance can also be in kind where a father can be ordered to buy milk every month towards the child. A father can be ordered to give uh, some of his livestock yearly to the children. Uh, a father can be ordered even to transport kids from, from school or to school, it's also part of maintenance. So maintenance can be in a form of uh, anything, mm -hmm. as long as it's something that relieves the mother from uh, the child's expenses, as long as you are trying to relieve the mother from the sum of the expenses. So maintenance can be anything in kind, it's still maintenance, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, in most cases, uh, and of course we are saying mothers because uh, they are known to be the most caregivers of especially babies, would then approach the maintenance court just after the birth of a child. But when does maintenance actually begin? Does it begin after the birth or even during the nine-month period of Pregnancy, Mr. Samkwasa. Uh, okay. Um, unfortunately, the our maintenance act uh, states clearly that um, uh, when the child is born, that's when the maintenance starts. Uh, meaning, the uh, if the the mother of the child decides to lay a complaint with the maintenance court. Within the period of one year, the mother of the child have a right to claim for pregnancy-related expenses to cover for the damages. That's how we call it also in, the, in our tradition, we call it damage. So it's also payable at the maintenance court, but it must be claimed within a period of one year. Uh, maintenance, uh, the mother may approach the maintenance court if she feels that the rights of the child is being violated according to the Constitution constitution of the Republic of Namibia, Article 15, uh, Subsection 1, which states clearly that both parents must be able to support the child. So um, once the child is born, uh, the Constitution is already there for them. The Children's Court Act of 2006 is also covers them. The Maintenance Act also covers for the children. So you can already see 
that uh, three articles, I mean three components, including the Constitution of the Republic of Namibia, which protects the children in the Article uh, 18. So uh, I would rather say that um, uh, once the mother gives birth and feels that the right of the child is being violated, they are free to approach the maintenance court to lay a complaint. Miss mm. Hasselman, let's try to, to balance the scales of justice. Uh, in most cases, it's fathers that are taken to maintenance court because, of course, so society perceives that mothers are most likely the ones that takes care of children, as we said earlier. But can a father also who is taking care of a child claim maintenance from a mother? Yes, um, certainly, and of course they do. It's, it's just not as common as, as the other scenario, because like you say, it's like the social construct that we are in. But it does happen that older children maybe prefer to live with, with their fathers or um, the circumstances in that particular family just ends up being like that. Um, and then, yes, the mother is liable to, to pay maintenance. But then interestingly, um, in, in, in that type of family setup, it's, it's, it's also rare that the, the custodian father goes to lay a complaint for maintenance against the mother. But there's nothing that prohibits him of do, for doing so. And yes, he will be granted um, a maintenance order in his favor, provided, of course, that the mother is working and earns an income. Mm. Now, people in some quarters of our society, Mr. Samkwasa, um, sit with the problem of not knowing the procedures to take in order for them to get assistance in so far as uh, maintenance is, is concerned. C can you just take us through the process for one to actually go and apply for maintenance? Okay, thank you. Um, anyone would be a, a police officer, a doctor, a nurse, a neighbor who has an interest into the child's life may approach the maintenance court and lay a complaint uh, if uh, the father or one parent has failed to support the child. Any of those parties can approach the, the maintenance court Upon approaching the maintenance court, uh, there are necessary forms that will be given. And then after being filled in, the maintenance officer will decide whether to take the matter for formal inquiry in court or will try to mediate the parties in the office before reaching to, to the presiding officer in the maintenance court for formal inquiry. Therefore, uh, we have three, uh, three or four types of maintenance orders when the, an application like that is brought to court. We have three, uh, three or four orders. Uh, we have orders that are made under Section 17 of the Maintenance Act of 2003. This is an order where the magistrate makes an order in court after a formal inquiry. We have an order made under Section 18 of the Maintenance Act of 2003, this is an order where the, the defendant in this particular case, the defendant consent to the amount being asked by the complainant without even reaching to the court, without even reaching to, 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 to the pres, presiding officer in court. We have an order made under Section 19, which we call default order. This is an order that is made ex parte. It's an order made by the magistrate and the maintenance officer without the defendant present in court. The court relies on the evidence adduced by the complainant, and then from there, the order will be made without the defendant being present in court. This only happens if the defendant is summoned properly by the messenger of court but fails to appear without any reasonable cause to give to court. The court might proceed to make such an order. So after the order has been made, 
the defendant will be informed in the writing that the court made an order that uh, specified that uh, the, the money must be paid on this specific day and for this specific child. So uh, 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 the last order we have is an order for scientific cost. Scientific cost, it does not mean that every application that is brought to court, uh, there are disputes of paternity. So court might also make an order for scientific test, testing, which is well known as DNA test, uh, or paternity test, so to say. So uh, these are kinds of orders that the court will make. But uh, as we continue with the program, I'll explain more uh, how the court makes an order uh, 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 during this process. Uh, I'm interested to know, can one make an appeal against an order that was granted in their absence and they do not agree with, with the order? Uh, you, yes, they do, they can appeal uh, because they say um, when the order is made, there is a specific period that is given for the, before the defendant in this matter have to um, have to approach the high court. Um, in the criminal matters, you have to approach the court within 14 days. But in the maintenance cases, if an order is given and you'd like to, and you'd like to, to appeal at the high court, you are given 21 days to do so. So I would say there's a remedy for you to appeal at the high court. Mm. Uh, Mr. Salman, we, we, we know that uh, Ms. Tassam Kwasa said uh, anybody that feels that the right of a child is being violated somewhere has the right to approach the maintenance court. How about households that are headed by children themselves? Um, yes, I was going to add that, that anyone includes children. It, does, it doesn't matter if, they, if it's a child-headed household, there's really no age limit. Every child can can approach the the maintenance court for um, for an order for maintenance. This even if because maybe the child's mother feels um, somewhat proud um, and doesn't want to go through the hassle of laying a complaint for maintenance and decides she will take care of the child herself. The child still has a right to claim for maintenance because the right belongs to the child, and the process is supposed to be so simple that the child can do so unassisted. Um, the child can simply approach, because children can normally not act legally by themselves, but this is an exception, mm -hmm. that they, they can approach the maintenance court and the maintenance officers must, must assist them um, to complete this process. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at how difficult will that be for an under 16 year old or five year old child? It is, really, it is really not supposed to be difficult. And I think we as a society, we also underestimate our, our, our children's capabilities. Um, but there's also nothing wrong with a, with a relative, any relative or a, um, a cousin, an older cousin, or even a teacher or anybody um, who the child trusts to assist the child in this process, mm -hmm. even if it's just going with and speaking um, on behalf. But, the maintenance officers know what they're supposed to do, and, and no child will be, will be shown the door if they, if they approach the, um, the court. Perhaps that's where your office comes in as a, a children's advocate. Uh, perhaps uh, what role does your office play in ensuring that children's rights are properly taken care of and, and then respected as well? So the primary function of the children's advocate is to... Um, to receive and investigate complaints about anything concerning children. And even in our case, anybody can come and lay a complaint um, about any child, including children, um, particularly about services that they are supposed to receive, maybe under the Maintenance Act or under the Child Care and Protection Act. And um, yes, and our door is always open. And if we can't help you, then we will refer you to bodies that can. We, we also appear for children in the children's court. Um, or on behalf of children generally in courts. So we, we really do have a very wide mandate and, and I always say there's nothing that you can't, uh, concerning children, that you can't come and complain to us about. 
um, because we will, we will point you in the right direction if we can't help you. Mm. According to the Age of Maturity Act number 57 of 1972, when someone turns 21, that person is no longer a child. Does maintenance then cease at that point or under what circumstances can that happen, Mr. Samkwasa? Okay. Um, according to the Maintenance Act, when the child attains the age of 18, the complainant must ask the court for extension in the manner um, if the child goes to tertiary education, the complainant has a right to ask for court for extension up to the age of 21. Um, uh, when the child attains the age of 21, but it still goes for tertiary education, uh, it's up to the court's discretion whether the order might be extended beyond the age of 21. So when the child attains the age of 21, does not give a right for the defendant to approach the court to automatically seize the, the, the order. It will depend from the presiding officer or the court to see to it that the, the cause that the child is trying to acquire might help him or her to maintain himself or herself. Does then that discretion also cover uh, those children who might be living with disabilities? Yes. Uh, before an order ma is made, uh, for example, um, if I'm paying 500 for three kids that I have, but the fourth one uh, has, a, has a disability, or should I say handicapped, uh, the, the, there will be conditions on that specific maintenance order. Uh, the, the amount of, of maintenance that I might be ordered will differ from the kids that are not disabled with the one that is disabled. The one that is disabled, I will have to pay more because of the, 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 the one who is uh, disabled need to see a doctor every now and then. So they, you have to cover for expenses, for medical expenses. So uh, the one who is a, a bit, uh, I mean, uh, who is disabled, I have to pay more than the one who is normal. Yes. And Daniel, yes. if I can just add also yes. that maintenance doesn't necessarily stop in the case of, or the duty to pay maintenance in the case of a child with disabilities. Because remember the money is, is to take care of their basic needs. So if their disability makes it, they are never able to provide for their own needs, then the parent's duty to, to maintain that child doesn't stop. Mm. So it, co it continues? Yes. Mr. Samkwasa, there have been complaints about inefficiency at maintenance court and in securing maintenance. In your vast years of experience, um, what seems to be the hindering factor? What, what, what seems to be hindering the process in your offices? Uh, I'll ask you to rephrase the question because uh, it's a bit vague for me. Uh, Okay, what is hindering the maintenance? The process of acquiring a maintenance order is said to sometimes take long and very tedious. What, what seems to be the problem there? Okay, um, it will take a bit long in most cases whereby uh, the defendant, when the defendant uh, comes to court and says he's unemployed. So investigations need to be carried out to determine whether the defendant has other income that he has been hidden in other in, in financial institutions such as banks. So in that case, uh, the maintenance inquiry or the process might take long, especially for people that are not employed, uh, self-employed people. It's a bit difficult to to finalize the inquiry in a reasonable time. So mm. most, in most cases, the inquiries or the process, why it takes long, is mostly for people that are unemployed, are self-employed, the businessmen. Those are the cases that are giving us uh, a bit the tough time. It, it, yeah. it becomes long, the process it, it, becomes long because you need to investigate. Correct. Ms. Hasselman, there come a point in life when somebody 
loses their jobs. And they are unable to keep up with the maintenance order anymore. So wh what happens then in that regard? Then they, um, they are supposed to go to the maintenance court and go apply for a variation of that order. Um, either um, to reduce the amount or to come back in a, in a few months time, go look for a job or another source of income and then come back. So the, the, the point is just to not just disappear. But the, the, the thing that people must also remember out there is that it's, it's parents' duties to support their children even without court orders. Um, and that it's normally the ones that don't want to do that, that ends up at court. So it's very easy for people to say they're unemployed only because they don't want to, like Mrs. Ankwasa said, mm -hmm. hide assets and hide income because they don't want to maintain their children. Mm. What happens then when a defendant defaults on, on their responsibility, the payment? Well, it's a criminal offense um, to, to not comply with a, with a maintenance order. So... Um, that's one way of taking care of it is to to lay a criminal charge and then um but there's also a civil route um in in in, in terms of which to to get that money i'm sure mr okay. Zankwasa can explain the process okay the, the, the complainant would have to sue in the high court no it's just uh, 10 days after the money is due and it doesn't come yes then they just simply go back to the maintenance court and go report it there all right. Yeah. Well, y yes. Yeah, y yes. Um, anyone who disobeys uh, a court order uh, is liable to a fine of not less, not more than four thousand or mm. twelve months in uh, imprisonment, which is one year, uh, or face a periodical imprisonment uh, where we arrest you during uh, the weekend and release you on Sunday. We have such provision in the Act. If you fail to pay maintenance, we can arrest you on a Friday and release you on Sundays. What we are trying to protect there is to protect your employment. If we arrest you and put you in jail for, a, for a, I mean, at least for a month, mm. you might lose your job. So to protect the income, to, to still come to court, we have to make a periodical imprisonment. Every Friday comes, you are in. Sunday, you are out. So that's how we, we do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's as Ms. Hasselman said, as Ms. Hasselman said, we, um, uh, uh, there are many routes to recover areas. Mm. There are many routes. You can mm. recover areas through civil uh, enforcement. This is where we can attach your goods. We can sell your car. We can uh, uh, attach your salary. So there are many ways. It depends from the complainant. But we do advise complainants. Do you want to recover your, your, your money through criminal or by civil so, enforcement? So the complainant will choose mm. by herself or himself mm. to see where the complainant is going to benefit. Now, there is also some sentiments uh, from some quarters of the society that there seems to be a misuse of these maintenance payments as opposed to using it for the basic needs of this child, they are now being used to buy Brazilian hairs and other luxuries, and it does not necessarily benefit the child. What happens in this case? Um, Daniel, um, it, people are jointly responsible, but that doesn't mean that they're equally responsible. So parents are responsible based off of how much they earn. So usually people will make these allegations that, that the, the mother is using the maintenance money to buy Brazilian hair um, must really have more, more, make more substantive type of allegations that the money is being misused. But be that as it may, that is also an offence under the Maintenance Act. So the remedy would then be to go and complain at the maintenance court and then charges will be brought and investigated and then once proven, the person will also be, may also be convicted um, of an offence and, and, and fined, for instance. The onus is now on the complainant to prove that there is misuse of these maintenance 
payment? The, the defendant, no. The, like, the onus is not on him to prove. He must just make the allegations. Um, because it's a criminal offence, the way it works is that the police or the maintenance investigators will investigate and, ga and gather evidence. And if there's sufficient evidence, the person will be charged. If there's not sufficient evidence, then obviously the person won't be charged. What's your experience, Mr. Mr. Samkwasa? Uh, Daniel, um, uh, misuse of maintenance, uh, our Maintenance Act has a provision, uh, Section 40, Subsection 1, clearly states that anyone who receives maintenance money on behalf of the beneficiary is also liable to a fine of not more than 4,000 or imprisonment of 12 months. So, what I'm, I'm going to say here is that uh, to prove a misuse of maintenance is something challenging. Let me give you a uh, hypothetical example. Um, if uh, the, the mother of my children goes to maintenance court, receives money, after receiving money, she goes and gives the money to her new boyfriend. I cannot run coming to court and, and, and report that I saw my ex-girlfriend giving money to her new boyfriend. What if, what if, because maintenance money sometimes comes very late, what if uh, this boyfriend loaned the money to, to your ex-girlfriend to use it for the benefit of the child? Mm -hmm. So uh, if the mother gets money from the maintenance, then you have to repay back to the, to the boyfriend. So to prove the, 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 the misuse of maintenance, it's something very challenging, but if the misuse is found, the maintenance officer will institute a, an inquiry to, uh, in the maintenance court in the order for the beneficiary to be uh, changed or to be varied or to be substituted. So uh, um, I, would, uh, I would say uh, we have uh, rare cases of uh, misuse in our uh, in our court.